Welcome to Pro Kitchen Software online video tutorial series. In this video, we are going to explore wall attributes. We will locate and access wall attributes, adjust wall settings in the general tab, create a convex and concave radius wall, create a slope, shed, and gambrel cathedral ceiling, change the building material of the wall, and we will adjust the textures for both the inside and outside of a wall. There are some designs that can present challenges for the designer, whether it is creating a cathedral ceiling, creating a curve on a wall, or setting different textures for walls within the design. In Pro Kitchen software, wall attributes give you, the designer, an opportunity to overcome those challenges and allow for you to provide your customer with the most detailed and precise representation of their remodel or new build. There are two ways in which to access a singular wall's attributes. The first method of accessing wall attributes is through the right-click toolbox. Hover the mouse over the desired wall and right-click. Then hover to Wall, into the menu, and over the wall number that you have selected. Once the mouse is hovering over the wall number, the toolbox will appear. Slide the mouse into the toolbox and select Attributes at the bottom of the list with a left click. Alternatively, to quickly access a wall's attributes without engaging the right-click toolbox, hover the mouse over the wall and double left click. A dialog box will then appear that will contain five tabs on the left-hand side. General which will allow you to change the type of wall, turn inside and outside wall zones on or off, and adjust the wall's dimensions. Curvature, which will allow you to create a convex or concave curve to the wall. Cathedral, which will allow you to create a slope, shed, or gambrel cathedral ceiling. Material, which will provide you the means to communicate to installers, architects, and inspectors the type of material the walls are constructed out of. And texture, which will allow you to change the texture of both the inside and outside of the wall. In the center of the dialog box will be the controls for the selected tab. On the right-hand side of the dialog box is the preview panel which will provide you with a visual representation of the wall. Also, at the bottom right corner of the preview panel, you will see a 3D icon. When you left-click this, you will see the 3D image of the wall. An additional set of controls will appear at the bottom of the panel. These are the manual rotation and zoom in or out tools. Or, you may utilize the mouse commands by hovering over the wall, either right-click and hold to rotate the wall, or use the rollerball on the mouse to zoom in and out. To change the view back to the line drawing of the wall, left-click the black and white line drawing icon that is now where the 3D icon had been. Let's take a deeper look at each of the tabs within the dialog box. When you open the dialog box, it will open to the General tab. There are three portions of the general information here for you to adjust. In the Construction portion, you may select what type of wall this wall will be. When you sketch a wall with the Sketch tool, it will be drawn as a wall at the height determined in either the Design or Default settings, and will by default only have the inside wall zone turned on. By left-clicking the radio button to the left of an option, we can change this to either a construction line, which is a zero-width invisible wall, or to a knee wall, which is a cabinet or bar type height standard wall. Note that by changing which type of wall this is, it will not automatically change any of the additional information as this will need to be done manually here in the Attributes dialog box. Wall zones, or placement zones, are the areas to the inside or outside of a wall in which cabinets and items will be placed. 
Walls drawn with the sketch tool will place with only the inside zone turned on, and construction lines will default with both the inside and outside zones turned on. Wall zones must be turned on in order to create an elevation view, provide proper rendering in 3D, and will assist in snapping the backs of items directly to the face of the wall, which will prevent any potential gaps in the design. When left-clicking in the box to the left of each of these options, you may be able to turn on or off the wall zone for either the inside or outside of the wall. Additionally, while designing, if you need to turn the wall zones off for item placement, at the bottom right corner of the Pro Kitchen window, left-click the Zone tab to temporarily turn off all activated wall zones, and left-click again to turn all the wall zones back on. Remember, wall zones must be on for proper rendering in 3D, so it is a good practice of habit to ensure the Zone tab is blue before opening the 3D Edge Viewer. Back in the Attributes dialog box, under the General tab in the Wall Dimensions portion, we can adjust wall width, wall thickness, and wall height for the selected wall. Notice, however, that with my selected wall, it is attached on both sides to adjoining walls, so I may not adjust the wall width within the dialog box and must utilize the Move tool from an adjoining wall's right-click toolbox. But if an open-ended wall is selected, we may adjust the wall width within the Attributes dialog box. To change any of these dimensions, either left-click the arrows to the right, up or down, the inner arrows adjust by 1 inch increments, and the outer arrows by fractional increments. Or, you may highlight the current text, then type in the required value using either decimal or fractional values, as ProKitchen will recognize both. The next tab is the Curvature tab. Curved walls have always posed design challenges, so this function is an incredible tool that will allow for you to represent your customer's unique design and precisely place all cabinetry and items along the curved wall. In the Curvature tab, you will see that we can create either a convex curve toward the outside of the room or a concave curve toward the inside of the room. As before, to select one of these options, left-click the radio button to the left of the option. Then, below, you may create the curve by one of three methods. You will only need to provide one of the following dimensions, and ProKitchen software will automatically create the curvature based on that single value. Again, we can utilize the arrows to the right of the dimension field, or highlight the text and type in the required value to change the shape of the curvature. As you change the values for any of these options, in the preview panel to the right, you will see the shape of the curve change in accordance with the entered value. Sector refers to the area of the room within the radius wall. Depth refers to the distance from the edge of the adjoining walls to the furthest point on the curvature. Radius refers to the length of the curved wall from the edge of the adjoining wall to the center point of the curvature. With the radius option, you may also choose to make the curvature larger than a semicircle by left-clicking the box to the left of this option below, which will then create a more circular room as the dimensional parameter entered will allow. Once the radius has been created, you may continue to place doors, windows, cabinets, and other items as you would with any other wall within the design. In the Cathedral tab is where you will be able to create a cathedral ceiling for the room. The Cathedral option will need to be created on the wall that will hold the peak of the ceiling. Here, you have four options. By default, None is selected and will render in 3D as a standard planar ceiling. Slope is a ceiling with a single peak. 
Shed will create a ceiling with two peaks, and Gambrel will create a ceiling with three peaks. Let's start with the first option, Slope. Once selected, below will appear the cathedral parameters, where you will need to enter two parameters to build this slope ceiling. Vault position refers to the distance from the left adjoining wall to where the peak of the ceiling will be in relation to the distance measured on the floor. Vault height refers to the height of the topmost peak of the ceiling in relation to the top of the adjoining wall height. As you adjust these parameters, the image in the preview panel will adjust to reflect the entered dimensions. Under the Cathedral Length section, you may choose to create the ceiling shape to the next wall, which is the wall opposite of the selected wall, or you may turn that option off by left-clicking the box to remove the check mark. Then, in the specified length box, Enter the distance in which this cathedral ceiling will continue into the room. When selecting the Shed option, you will see there are now four fields under Cathedral Parameters in which you may adjust the dimensions. Now, there is a Left Vault and Right Vault position, again referring to the distance from the left adjoining wall to the position of both the left and right peaks of this ceiling shape within the room. And there are also fields for both the left and the right vault heights that will allow you to create a ceiling shape with two different peak heights. Again, as you change these parameters, the image to the left will change to reflect the entered values. You will also have the option to continue this cathedral ceiling the entire distance of the room to the opposite wall, or to turn off the option and determine how far into the room this ceiling shape will continue. The Gambrel ceiling shape is created like the previous two. However, now there are three vault positions and vault height values to be entered. Remember, when entering the vault position values, that each value is a reflection of where the peak will sit from the left adjoining wall. Also, as with the previous options, you may adjust whether this ceiling shape will continue to the opposite wall or at what distance this ceiling shape will end. Once the cathedral ceiling has been created, when we open the elevation view of the adjoining walls, we will see that there are additional areas in which we can place windows and other items. Once these items have been placed on the wall, you may utilize the up-down placement tools to move the items up onto the cathedral ceiling, allowing you to install skylight windows and other construction features, such as support beams. Back in the wall attributes, next up is the material tab. Here, we have several options for the construction material of the wall. Each of these options will have their own particular marking to indicate the type of construction material. Wood stud will appear as a dark gray with black lines along the wall, indicating the position of the studs. Concrete will appear as a black outline for the entire width and thickness of the wall. Concrete block will appear as a black outline with black lines along the entire length of the wall. Metal stud, similar to the wood stud option, will appear dark gray, this time with much more closely placed black lines. Brick will appear as a black outline with diagonally placed black lines. And Special Finish Face will appear with thick, black, horizontally placed lines along the outside edge of the wall. Choosing any of these options will not affect any of the wall's general dimensions. So if the wall thickness is different, you must navigate back to the General tab and make the adjustments. Changes made to the material of the wall will only serve as an indicator to architects, installers, and inspectors regarding the wall construction material. The last tab within the wall attributes 
is the Textures tab. In this tab, you can choose a texture that is different from the selected wall texture within either the design or default settings. You have the ability to select a texture for both the inside and the outside of the selected wall, particularly handy for multi-room designs. The process for selecting a new texture is similar to how you make a texture selection in the design or default settings. To the right of either the inside or outside texture fields, left-click the Select button. This will launch an additional dialog box which will provide the textures catalog. In the upper left of the dialog box, you may search for a texture by keyword, name, or sample number, or utilize the catalog tree. The samples that match your search results or are contained within a selected folder will appear below. Left-click a sample to see a preview in the preview panel to the right. Once the desired sample has been selected, left-click the OK button to apply the change and dismiss the additional dialog box. Now, in the Wall Attributes dialog box, you will see the selected sample appear in the preview box. And in the preview panel to the right, if you hover your mouse over the wall, you may use the rollerball on the mouse to zoom in to view the applied texture. Then, right-click and hold to rotate the wall to view the opposite side of the wall. You may also clear the selected wall texture, which will restore the wall texture to what has been previously designated within the design or default settings. Or, you may select to change the texture of the inside or outside of the wall to match the selected texture of the opposite side of the wall. Once you have made all the necessary changes to the selected wall, navigate to the bottom right corner of the dialog box and left-click OK to apply all the changes. Continue this process for all necessary changes for each of the walls providing the appropriate foundation for your design. Then, you are ready to continue placing architectural and room elements and begin bringing in the desired cabinetry elements to create a beautiful, precise, and true to final product rendering of your customer's home. Thank you for watching this video tutorial. For more videos like this, please visit www dot prokitchensoftware dot com